Hello everyone, welcome to beautiful Hainan. Right now I'm at a place called Fenjiezhou Island. This is one of the many, many islands off of the coast of Hainan, which is an island just off the coast of China. And I'm just having a great time. As you can see, I'm a little sunburned, my hair's a little bit crazy. Uh, and you know what? That's okay. Now in this special, I'm gonna be talking about this island because I have been invited by the Hainan Tourism Board in conjunction with Go China TV. So thank you for uh, inviting me on this trip. And I'm gonna spend the next three days uh, on this crazy island and uh, just having a good time. So come with me, I'll show you what Hainan has to offer. Let's take a minute and talk about Hainan. Hainan is a tropical island province just off the southern coast of mainland China. It's believed to have first been inhabited by the Li people many thousands of years ago, and its governors and inhabitants have changed many times over the years until finally becoming a province and special economic zone in 1988. Since then, its role in China and its economy has continued to grow. So what is it like to actually be there? It's often compared with the USA's Hawaii, but Really, aside from the beaches, seafood, and men at the beach in teeny tiny shorts, they share few similarities. Nikki Johnson is going to explain a little bit more about that. Hainan has to be its own place. Hawaii is Hawaii. Hainan is Hainan. They're both awesome. Uh, I love them both, but they're definitely not the same place. Hainan is a part of China. It has Chinese culture. It has minorities like the Li and Miao people. Uh, with their own culture, their own tradition, their own languages. You have to come to Hainan to experience Hainan. And when you get to Hainan, if you're expecting Hawaii, well, I'm sorry to say, this is Hainan, not Hawaii. So as all of you know, my videos are pretty much just me, but throughout this video, uh, you're gonna see a variety of people. So uh, let's go around and just figure out uh, who everyone is. So we'll... Zoe, I'm the translator and to a guy. All here. right. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice to meet you, Nathan. Hi, I'm Nikki, and I am the editor of Visit Hainan. Hi, I'm Yvonne, travel blogger on Go Yvonne. All right, cool. And uh, Mr. Cameraman? Hi, Cameraman. All right, and there's another one around here somewhere oh, doing there, something. There oh, there he is, there he is, over there. So, uh, yeah, these are the people you'll be seeing every now and then. So, uh, there you go. We started off this trip the right way by eating one of Hainan's most famous foods. I had no idea what to expect, but I was still really excited about it. Let's check it out. So it's the very first morning here in Hainan. It's the uh, first meal. And so I, I basically got a couple of things here. This is called baolua fen. So this is a baolua noodles for lack of a translation. A baolua is actually a local place here in Hainan. And this, this dish has a quite a long history. It goes back to the uh, what the Chinese call the Nanbei Chao, which is um, that's about uh, fourth century to about the sixth century. It became really popular during the Qing Dynasty later or Ming Dynasty. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get started. Then. Hmm. Hey, that's fantastic and really strange at the same time. Is it? I'm not sure what this is. Is this bolo or uh, bolo Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, so it's like a, I forget what that is, it's like jackfruit? It, yeah. So we have fruit in noodles, which is kind of a weird thing. And then now uh, we've got beef and cilantro, rice noodles, um, peanut. It's a really weird mix of flavors, but it totally, totally works. It totally, totally works. And, uh, Huh, so sweet and salty, fruity and meaty, and peanutty. Uh, I don't get it, but props to you. Whoops, I got excited, sorry. Props to you, Hainan. So this is called a zongzi, which is uh, basically, oh, I don't know, it's sticky rice 
with some meat inside of it. Now this is traditionally eaten, well it's eaten all year round actually, but the most traditional holidays during Duan Wu Festival got meat inside of it. A lot of places it's fruit and stuff like that, but this has got meat in it. Oh my God, I can't really get into this. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a big Zongsa person. Um, not, not too much flavor. But if you're a sticky rice kind of person, it is salty, um, it is savory. All right, I'm being I'm being pressured to try the meat part, but I don't think I can. <laughs> it's very. Um, I have to do some mining first to dig for it. Mm. Meat part is better. Yeah, it's a, it's better. Yeah, better than just the rice. Well, let me tell you, yeah. basically, like the local people, two people share mm -hmm. one sticky. <laughs> ah, okay. That's better. That's better. Yeah, that makes more sense for two people to save that. Something like that. Two and a half, three stars. This is going to give me a, a five. If you could this share is it great. With that pretty girl. <laughs> nah. Nah. No. No. That's mine. So sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm good with that. And indeed I was. It was time for our next destination, the mangrove forest. On our way, got to see a little bit of the scenery and contemplate just how lucky I was to be inside the car instead of outside the car. And before I knew it, we were there. So I was led to believe that this was gonna be basically an eat all of the things trip, but uh, I guess not. Actually, uh, I'm here in the, in the mangroves right now, uh, which is uh, not a place I really ever envisioned going. I don't like water too much. Uh, especially murky water like this, but whatever. So uh, I'm here and uh, apparently I'm going to be doing a lot of things. There you go. That's life right there. Uh, this is something that you got to try while you're in Hainan is these uh, these fresh coconuts. You can find them just about on every street corner. You can find them in every attraction. You can find them everywhere, anywhere. There, I mean, and they're uh, fairly cheap. They're kind of hit and miss. Like some of them are super, super sweet. Some of them are a little bit tart. Um, like when they're really, really fresh, they're going to be a little bit tart. And as you drink them, it feels like at least to me the flavor gets a little bit sweeter as you go on it's good times it really quenches your thirst you really feel nice mm. ah. after we finished up at the mangroves we loaded up and went to a local family's house they showed us around their house which was overlooking the city they put on a really really nice spread for us i mean as you can see they got a full-on spread they just laid it all out for us so enough time wasted let's check out the food so today we are at a local family's home, actually. So we've got uh, two people here uh, who, who have uh, really worked very hard to make this fantastic meal. So we got a lot of uh, great, great foods in front of us that uh, I don't even want to need to explain all of these. So like simple uh, vegetables like uh, potatoes and broccoli and um, cabbage, things like that. We have more interesting things like um, this kind of sticky rice ball uh, mixed with a little bit of tofu. We've got laro, which is kind of like cured meat. And we've got uh, shang chong or la chong, which is like a kind of sausage. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shu ro. So these things you've seen in my Sichuan videos. Um, and then uh, you've seen me eat this in another video. I actually cooked this. This is called duo jiao yu to, um, which is, uh, it's the fish head. Uh, and duo jiao is just kind of a uh, pepper. So, um, and then this right here, this is called oyu, which I have no idea what the English is, but um, whatever. It's apparently one of the best fish uh, you can get in Hainan. It's one of the best things, and uh, because you have to go deep sea fishing for it. Uh, you can't farm it. 
and so it's very expensive and very, very good. So we'll at least try this one. So uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. Mm. Oh, that's really, really nice. See, there's garlic on top of there. So the garlic's giving it a nice flavor. A little soy sauce is put on there. And you can really taste the, the sea in that. You can taste the ocean in that. That's not a farm fish. That is not a farm fish. Uh, and very soft. It kind of flakes and falls apart in your mouth. It's just mm, really, really nice. Not too many bones. It's fantastic. And, uh, so I think that's kind of the centerpiece of this meal. And in Hainan, seafood is Hainan's thing. So we've got it here in the middle. It is what everyone wants to eat. So I'm gonna hurry up and eat all this before everyone else gets a gets a crack at it. So just after eating, we were off to the next destination, the Temple of the Five Lords. And this is a, it's basically a shrine. It's a temple dedicated to these five different officials throughout a, a few different dynasties who were banished to Hainan. That's actually part of Hainan history that Hainan was a place where officials would go to be exiled. It wasn't considered like a paradise. It wasn't considered very nice. And this, this temple is all about kind of their history. And it's interesting, right when you enter in, you're greeted by two girls who are part of this local minority. I honestly can't remember which one, I'm so sorry. Um, and they come in there and they touch your ears like this and then they show you the way. And that's part of their custom. They do it to every single visitor of the temple, so that's cool. Yeah, so they have different parts that describe uh, the history of these five dudes, along with a couple of generals who played a part in making Hainan what it is today as far as like being part of China. So uh, yeah, it was just a, it was a really interesting stop. It was really quick. It's not that big of a temple. So you can, you know, go around it in just like an hour or so. They do have English for uh, most of the signs. And yeah, that was, a, that was a good time. And then we're off again to the next thing. This trip was really, really fast. We spent a lot of time driving, going this place, this place, and this place. But still a good time. And here we are in a chill area in Hankou. And on these streets, it's one of the most famous one named the Zhongshan Bay Road. And on the streets, there are a lot of cafes, uh, artists like painters, calligraphers, they do a lot of artwork. So yeah, enjoy this simple Chilo street. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Chilo basically refers to these kind of buildings right here. This kind of uh, architecture or style where you see we have an overhang right here. Uh, where at the bottom we have basically shops of all different kinds um, and then yeah you can walk under this way and then up top is where people are actually going to live so and the reason they are designed this way is because you know this is an island and there's quite a lot of rain and there's quite a lot of uh, flooding and things and so you know if there happened to be a lot of rain or there happened to be some kind of hurricane or and there were flood waters would rise that uh, people's residences wouldn't be harmed. They may lose the shop or whatever, but the residents themselves wouldn't be harmed. And uh, this is very characteristic of Southern China. When I, when I say Southern China, I mean like Hainan and Guangdong in particular. Y'all might have seen in my Guangzhou videos something like this, uh, because when I was in Guangzhou last time, you saw around uh, Shangxia Jiulu, they have a few of those kind of buildings. And um, you know, if you guys have ever watched She Milk's videos, uh, Lao Y86, he has made some videos about this in uh, Huizhou. So uh, if you're interested in this kind of uh, architecture, you can check out those videos. I'll uh, put them all down below, along with all the other crap I've been talking about in this, uh, in this little uh, special. So uh, we're going to check it out. We actually ended up spending the rest of the day at that Chilo Street. We were at this place first called the Ye Yutang, which is... I don't know, the coconut house or something. They had a lot of desserts there that featured coconut, and uh, they had a lot of just uh, different kinds of coffee. It was a cafe, basically. Uh, and we were there to learn how to make a traditional local snack called ji shitang, which is um, called the chicken dropping soup. That's probably the best translation for it, which sounds awful. It sounds awful, but it's not. Now, let me show you why. Ji Shitung is made by blending up the leaves of a certain plant, which I actually can't remember the name of it, but anyway, it smells 
really, really awful, like chicken shit. That's why it's called that for one of the reasons. You mix it up with some flour and some other kinds of stuff, and I don't really know what it is, and you can knead it up into what becomes a kind of dough. And then you roll up the dough into what becomes something that looks like chicken droppings, which is another reason why it's called that. You mix it up with some water flavored with ginger and sugar, and then you, uh, you drink it. You eat it. Eat slash drink it. Let's, uh, let's see how I feel about it. All right, so uh, it's time to uh, taste this, this soup that I've already forgotten the name of. But yeah, I mean, take See, a look. See, chicken chop, ch chicken chopping uh, soup. Chicken dropping soup. And yeah, because of the way it looks, it really does <laughs> look like that. Um, and it looks like a lot of uh, Cantonese and that kind of food. It's, it's brown, it's got a ton of ginger in it. So uh, let's try why don't we? Mm. Wow, that ginger flavor is quite strong. <laughs> but it's very sweet, actually. How is it sweet? You didn't put any sugar in it. Sugar water was in the ginger water. Oh, okay. All right. So that's why sugar water was in the ginger water. Sugar ginger water. And these little balls, they basically just taste like little flower balls. There's really no flavor to it, but that's very, very sweet. That's quite nice, actually. I would eat that again. <laughs> that's good. I'd eat that again. Good to know. <laughs> Cheers, I give it five stars. Okay. I really didn't expect that. Okay. I really didn't expect that. Yeah. That's quite good. We've got the coconut uh, milk version of the same the same kind of thing. It's still uh, chishutan, but with coconut. All right. Oh, that's much better. <laughs> Are you kidding me? No ginger? It's fantastic. Mmm. Mm. Yeah, why would anyone make it the other way? This is so much better. <laughs> why would you make it the other way? This is way better. Hmm. This one is six stars. Okay. Six stars. Like it. But we ended that day in style. We went to this place called 1896, which is a local coffee bar of all things. I had no idea. But Hainan actually has its own local coffee culture. They grow coffee locally there. So we got some coffee brewed for us right there. And uh, it was very interesting coffee. It was really, really bitter at first. But the thing is, the aftertaste was amazing. So, so good. And after we sat down for the coffee, we went downstairs and had a freaking feast. Just the best food. Seafood and chicken and duck and just oh man oh man oh man it was awesome had a really it just had a blast <laughs> just had a blast it was i don't know i felt i was happy <laughs> happy next day we were off bright and early to take my favorite form of transportation in china the train i do like taking the train in china because i can see the countryside i can see where i'm at in china and get at least a glimpse of what things are like in that area that I'm in. And this was true in Hainan as well. When you take that train in Hainan, you're going to see a lot of farmland, you're going to see a lot of uh, <laughs> coconut trees, and you're going to see a lot of construction, which will tell you a few different things. One, that coconuts are just freaking everywhere. Two, agriculture is still a huge part of life in Hainan. And three, Hainan is still a developing part of China. And places are still being connected together. You know what? That just means that Hainan has a bright future ahead of it. And there's still a lot more to see in this episode, so let's check it out.
So a one hour drive that eventually turned into a three hour drive, lots of uh, countryside, lots of uh, interesting things has led to this place. And um, so in case you didn't know the name of this place, this name of this place is Yanoda. Yeah. Okay. So this uh, this place has done a remarkable job of reinforcing its brand because you go in because everyone who goes in, everyone who comes out, and everyone inside there who sells anything. Yes. Okay. They will just shout that at you. So even if you don't speak any Chinese, if you don't speak any Asian languages at all, even if you don't care, you're gonna remember. Yanoda! Yanoda! So here, Yanoda is love, Yanoda is life. Try to forget it, but you can't. There you go, you're welcome. Okay, so we are at a local restaurant just having a nice little dinner to, uh, you know, uh, in the day. And uh, you know, there's something that's done here in Hainan uh, that is a little bit different than uh, other places. And uh, I want to talk about it uh, because, well, uh, it's, it's just a new idea, it's a new thing. So you basically you start with uh, soy sauce in here and then vinegar, and then you can add in uh, peppers and then uh, to top it off, you uh, get this little little bitty orange right here, and you squeeze it into the sauce like this. And so you have a, a kind of citrusy, uh, salty, garlicky, and spicy sauce all kind of mixed together. So that's a very, um, that's a whole new realm of flavor that I'm really uh, excited to, uh, to get into. We're gonna try just this um, this beef right here, or this is beef. Just chimarron, chimarron. No, no, no. Okay, this is beef, and uh, we're gonna try that first and uh, get that put into the sauce and kind of let's mix it up a bit, get that flavor in there, along with whatever flavor is actually kind of cooked into that sauce, and um, we're gonna try it. So uh, here we go. Mm. Oh, that is, that is interesting. <laughs> that is interesting, that citrus flavor along with the garlic flavor. And beef is, is a really kind of a weird thing. But I could do that, I can do that. That's a, that's a, oh my God, what is this? What is this? Uh, I'm gonna have to find out, is this, is this fish? <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Did you actually make sure? Okay, this is this is cuisine right here. I have no idea what any of this is. But um you know what? This you know, let's try it. Try it. Put this in here and uh, see what happens. Come on. Okay. Mm. Mm. That's quite nice. So what I really like about the food down here is that the flavors continue to, even though it looks like super heavy, 
The flavors aren't that strong. I mean, they're not. Uh, it's not heavy food, um, which is uh, which is great. You know, I live in Sichuan, and all the not all, but a lot of the food is really very oily. It's very very heavy. You feel really full, and uh, it's this is just a it's a new thing. It's a whole new kind of realm. And uh, you know what? I dig it. I dig it because there are a lot of flavors in here, and they are quite well balanced and um, and very nice. Um, mm. Mm. The orange is just that is a whole that's a whole new thing. It's really strange. And they're awesome. Having that cit that note of citrus on top of it. everything, and you can take everything and put it put it in the sauce. You know, everything. I like it. I like it. Definitely gonna have to show you this room because this is definitely the nicest place I have ever ever stayed. Okay, so of course we have a bathroom here, like separated, uh, shower, toilet, all that, and uh, sink, whatever. I mean that's fine, but this is where it gets crazy. Okay, so very nice floors. Okay, fantastic, big bed, really warm colors, and all of that. Uh, and we've got a nice wooden closet thing. I don't know if it's really a closet because it doesn't close, but hold on right here. This this is what people in Texas would call the coupe, coupe de grass. The coupe de grass. So let's, uh, look at that. I've got like a little hot tub spa thing in my room right there. I mean, that's crazy. Um, besides just how nice the room is. And uh, actually, uh, in the back, there's a courtyard I'll have to show you in a bit. And that was pretty much it. I ended the night at the hot springs of the hotel, just chilling, went for a swim after that, and that was the night. The next day we got up bright and early to have some breakfast and just enjoy the amazing environment of the resort, of the hotel. It was a really green place and completely just away from the city. Oh, it was awesome it's awesome and i actually ended up running into a chinese subscriber which was unexpected but very cool and then we were off to our next destination so what is this next destination well it is this place called the nanshan temple or the nanshan temple complex and it's basically like a theme park but the theme is buddhism <laughs> that's basically the way that i can describe it the place was built in order to showcase the harmony between man and nature and to just be a place where Buddhists could go and do Buddhist things, whatever it is they do. And the highlight for me was just being outside and being on the beach. They had a nice beach there and taking photos and laughing and joking with people. And uh, they do have this really, really giant statue there called the Haishan Guanyin, which is like the seaside uh, Guanyin. And Guanyin is this figure within uh, one of the eight and a half billion like sects of Buddhism. I don't really know, but it was a very, very impressive, you know, work. I mean, it's a huge, huge statue, bigger than the Statue of Liberty, which I've been to as well. And uh, it was, uh, yeah, it was impressive. Although I gotta say, if you're a Buddhist and you're following Buddhist precepts, building a theme park to make money is probably not something that you're gonna want to do. Because that place, it doesn't have any real history. It's just, it was just built there as an attraction. So you could skip it. Um, I mean, if you want to pay that much money and, and go see a big statue, that's fine. But um, my opinion, just skip it and um, see the next thing, which I'm going to talk about in a second here. We got back in the van to go to what was to be my final destination. And along the way, we saw some more amazing scenery and just got to enjoy having a little bit of stupid fun and uh, just having a good time. But then we arrived at the Yalong Bay Tropical Paradise Forest Park. You know, if you were watching me about a year ago, I was actually here before. Uh, but this time, I've actually got, uh, I've got some decent camera equipment so I can actually show you what the view is like here. I'm going to switch over to my other camera. But... Uh, 
this place is great you know it's one of the showcase areas of uh, Hainan because you can see so many things from this uh, this viewpoint it's fantastic but something's a little bit different I'm on a rope bridge which is uh, not something I did last time because uh, it was too expensive and whatever but I'm you know I am doing it this time so this is like a hundred and 80 meters long or something like that 160 something meters and it overlooks all of this hey there's the camera guy over there can you see him very cool okay let's not oh, bounce yeah let's not bounce everything close close okay this is kind of terrifying because it's rocking back and forth with every step that people take that's uh that's a hell of a view though it's wonderful. It's time to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, the time has come to part. Oh. So, goodbye everyone. Thank I've you been, for coming. Yeah, again. I've enjoyed this trip. It's been really great. So, yes, come again. Yanada, remember. Remember Yanada. <laughs> and just like that, it was over. Those three days that came and went really fast. But I did get to see a lot of things, go to a lot of new places, and meet a lot of people which is always great and this is the kind of trip that you will have when you go to Hainan as a tourist uh, I can't say I know local culture or anything but I got to see it at the surface just like what any tourist would and so if this looks like a trip you might want to go on by all means go go and have a good time amazing views fantastic local parks tasty wonderfully delicious foods, local culture, minority culture, traditions that can only be found here in Hainan. These are just some of the things that you will find, you'll stumble upon, you may be guided to, but no matter how you get there, no matter how you get here, there's some of the many things that Hainan has to offer. And so I'd recommend that everyone really come here and give this place a, give this place a shot, because it is, uh, it is really something special. It is something unique. And um, that's about it. So I wanna just take this time and just thank the Hainan uh, Tourism Board for inviting me uh, and just showing me this, this, wonderful, uh, this wonderful trip. I've really had a great time. And uh, I hope that you all have enjoyed watching it too. And uh, I guess that's about it. So if you get a chance, please come here. And uh, I guess I will see you all next time. Did you see my video with uh, where I went? My last one. At the oh. end, I put a blooper up. Oh, did where you? The, okay. where, where the guy at the end was oh, staring at the screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's dumb.